Welcome back to Computer Networks. And today we're going to have a look at application programming interfaces. So this is the interface that the network provides to us as a programmer if we want to create uh, you know, network enabled programs and applications. So when we talk about this idea of the interface being exported by the network, what we really mean is that the operating system that has a software implementation of the network protocols provides us with a programming interface that we can use to write programs to make use of that service. And the same way that operating systems provide uh, all sorts of other services, it's kind of what they're there for, right? Uh, and so this interface, this programming interface for applications is as a result called the application programming interface or API for short. And so you'll hear, you've probably potentially already heard about APIs. Uh, and so now we're going to look at the API, the socket API, for networking, because this is really the uh, the most common uh, one that you'll find. <coughs> and it originated back in early versions of Unix uh, back in the 1970s and 1980s. Um, and now practically every operating system supports it, even ones that have a very different heritage. So Windows, for example, supports a socket API uh, and has done for a long time. So what we're actually talking about is the, the set of different services that are accessible and the way that you call them from in a program in order to make use of these network services. And again, the, whilst the general uh, approach of the Sockets API uh, is very similar between operating systems, there may be particular tweaks and differences and changes in there that you have to, uh, to look at, uh, but the overall concept is quite similar. So the Socket API is funnily enough, named after a socket. And so this is kind of conceptually, it's like you know a power socket and a power cord, um, and you connect the cord between a power source and a thing that you want to use some electricity in, and it completes the circuit, allows electricity to flow through so that you can do what you want to do. And so in the network sense, a network socket is much the same thing. An application can plug into something uh, that it wants to communicate with in order to do some useful kind of task. Uh, and so this abstracts, and again, we've spoken about the abstraction and the layers. So this just provides a very simple interface, regardless of what the underlying network actually is uh, for the program to use. And the network, underlying network can change and it doesn't matter to the program or to the programmer who's had to write it. So the interface has mechanisms for creating these sockets to kind of get one ready and then to plug it into the network so that you can actually get the uh, the use out of it and then to send things in one or both directions over that and then finally to unplug and destroy the socket at the end. Uh, so uh, it's actually, it's not that complicated. Uh, it's just a case of understanding what the calls are that map to these kind of uh, fairly logical tasks really. One thing that you have to uh, to take into account as well when you create a socket is exactly what kind of socket do you want? Uh, do you want one that goes over the internet, IPv4 or IPv6? Um, or are you just having a, a socket that you want to be as efficient as possible between two programs on the same computer? Because the socket interface supports both of these. Um, and it also supports a, in many operating systems, a raw uh, packet interface that lets you although really frame is probably a better description here, um, that bypasses the TCP IP stack and lets you actually just directly send and receive, for example, Ethernet frames or Wi-Fi frames. Uh, and so the same API lets you access these very different network types uh, in terms of their underlying implementation, but with very similar uh, calls uh, to access them. Um, and likewise, you can have different uh, protocols that you're accessing on these different network types. So for example, you can have uh, a byte stream. So this is, uh, would map to TCP uh, on uh, a modern system, or you might just want to be able to send packets of information uh, like TFTP does, in which case uh, UDP is likely to be the underlying transport. And so there are these uh, kind of you know definitions that are used in most of the languages of uh, you know, PF underscore for the um, uh, the type, uh, you know, the, the family uh, of socket. And so you might have INET, INET4, INET6, um, Unix or packet after those, uh, or others in some cases. 
uh, and then you do the protocol selection by actually selecting the socket type with a sock underscore something. So sock underscore stream, sock underscore dgram are the, uh, the two most common here. And we'll have a look at the creating of sockets in the next video. Uh, so hop over to that one and we'll continue from there. And as always, leave comments and questions uh, that you might have below.